Lad os Most of you just labeled me as a speaker who lost his mind. <laughs> and that's okay. But you did so based on some missing information. You will be able to change how you think about me in an instant, once you realize that this opening was scripted. Labeling me is one thing, but do you know that you also label yourself all the time, and by doing so, you limit your possibilities, your talent, and your potential. And I've been there. Let me take you back to what turned out to be a life-changing Saturday morning in 2002. I was 16 years old and an aspiring professional soccer player. It's a difficult year until now, because I've only been a substitute. But Today might be my lucky day, because my competitor in the team is away on holiday. So there's a serious chance I'll make it into the lineup this week. So I walk into the dressing room and immediately I look to the left, where the whiteboard will reveal the starting lineup of today's match. And there it is, for the first time, Wouter van den Berg, number four. I can still feel the joy and excitement. The team plays a wonderful match, and I play one of the best matches in my career. I feel no fear, no anxiety, and even though we lose with 1-0 to zero in the final minutes, we step up the pitch with pride and dignity. Now fast forward one week, where the ritual repeats itself, but one thing is different. My competitor is back from his holiday. So will I again be starting? I rush into the dressing room and again I look to the left and my name is again on the board. Number four, I made it. Maybe this year is going to be my year after all. So I sit down as the coach starts with his pre-match talk and then it happens. He says, you might be wondering why Wouter is starting again this week because it's obviously not because he's such a good football player. <laughs> Ouch. But, you know, Wouter is important for the organization of the team, and he does some active coaching. So that's why he's starting. We need that. Being an optimist, I focus on the latter compliment. <laughs> Apparently, I'm important for the organization. So that match, I scream my lungs out. I put all my energy in what I just heard was my unique selling point. I played the worst match ever. Not only did we lose, but I was directly responsible for three goals scored against us. <laughs> you see what just happened? My coach, he labeled me as being technically inferior. And in my mind, I started to believe him. Then the mistakes I made during that match proved to me that he was right. So from that point onward, I decided to focus all my energy on my leadership and coaching skills. Isn't that interesting, how that works? One single remark by a person I trusted and respected deeply transformed my self-image in an instant. I hid away my potential in a secret compartment in the back of my brain, inaccessible for future use. My soccer career ended five years later, and I never made it to full professional level. The real question is, was I indeed not good enough to become a professional soccer player, or did I label myself as not good enough? In my search for answers, I completed a PhD in neuroeconomics. Studying how the brain works provided me with valuable insights into the power of self-labeling and how it shapes behavior. The brain is one of the most complex and magnificent organs 
we have in the body. At least, that's what our brain is trying to convince us of. <laughs> For the 100 billion neurons to function, it only requires the power level of a 60 watt light bulb. And information travels with the speed of 10 meters per second through the roughly one quadrillion synapses that make up the neural networks in our brain. When you study the brain, you learn to respect two things. First, everything we think is the consequence of electrical and chemical signals in the brain. Second, when the brain processes information, it does so mostly subconsciously, using labels. These labels function as shortcuts or time and energy savers when the brain tries to make sense of the world. These labels then emerge into your conscious level via those little voices inside your head that tell you that you can or cannot do something. So if these labels are so important, where do they come from? Our labels originate from four distinctive life phases. During our first phase, we emerge as a ball of cells from the DNA from our father and from our mother. 40 to 60% of our automatic behavior is directly related to our genetic makeup. Did you ever say to yourself, that's just not me? That's the typical phase one label. I myself, when I studied my DNA, found my first phase label. In my DNA, there's a predisposition for being inflexible. I'll explain how that changes my thinking on a daily basis with the following example. Since our organization is growing, we needed to move to a bigger office. I don't like that kind of change. So I was the last one to accept. But now that we are in the new office, I'm actually the first one who really feels comfortable. The label in my brain overvalues the current state of the world so that I try to hold on to it. It hampers my decision making. And knowing that this label exists gives me the power to choose to ignore that label and be more decisive. During the second phase, which rises during our early upbringing, our primary caretakers shape the way we feel and think about ourselves and about others. Are you the one that reads every email, every blog post, and every proposal before it leaves the office? Because other people can't be trusted, right? There's your second phase label. Third, we develop our personality with the help of our friends and family and our early life experience. Our personality shapes our individuality and shapes our personal preferences. I, for instance, am highly intrigued by solving complex problems, always trying to find a better solution for the problem at hand. And if it were up to me, we would never release any of the new products we develop, but stay stuck in a constant cycle of innovation, improvement, and fine tuning. There you have it, my third phase label we can make it even better. Then, finally, in the fourth phase, we develop our mindset. As our brain reaches adulthood, the prefrontal cortex in the brain becomes powerful enough to facilitate rational and conscious decision making. Did you also decide to work less in the weekends? So you can spend more time with your family? That's the fourth phase label. You decided on what you found important and updated your mindset accordingly. You see how this works? If you know where your labels come from, you are able to transform them and unleash that potential that is locked up in that sequent compartment in the back of your brain. So how does this translate into the real world? Since DNA is the beginning of our first phase, I spent the last eight years analyzing the DNA of over 5,000 professionals worldwide, from junior sales to CEO level. For them, this analysis was a reference point or compass, so you might say, for their future professional development. Because the results I've seen are remarkable. If you know where your labels come from, you significantly boost self-efficacy rating proactive attitude and engagement, while significantly reducing an employee's willingness and intention to look for another job. When you are born, you are who you are. 
But when you grow older, you are who you think you are. So right now, I invite you to peel off those labels that hold you back and transform your self-image into one of happiness, excellence, and performance in an instant. Good luck.